Alrighty. Um, here we have a 1950s Trico screen wash bottle with a, a vacuum pump. Um, it had screen wash in it, but it's turned all kind of weird and funky. But uh, this is how it all comes apart and how it should behave. So, as soon as any big jar, it just undoes, give it a bit of a shake, just to try and drain some of that out. Only really going to be in interested in the top part with the pump. Um, ew. It's got mouldy. That's nasty. This is also quite hot. <laughs> I just pulled it out of the car and it was running about three quarters of an hour ago. So, uh, the first thing that I do if I'm going to be taking taking this apart is get fluid everywhere, like that. I'll be right back, let me go and get uh, some paper towel. somebody else. One moment, please. <laughs> okay. So, pull the pipe off. Uh, that's just a regular piece of pipe from there. The main part of the pump contains quite a lot of fluid, as you can see but it's held in with a snap ring. Uh, you do have to take a great deal of care with this because it's Bakelite and you can see I've already broken that piece off there. But this ring is separated and so if you have to hold this section because it wants to be pushed out, there's a spring inside. So you have to hold it together, unsnap the ring all of the way around and then gently let the spring off so there's all of the assembly inside there so we have this little trivet thing which stops the spring from pushing the valve in the top if I carefully pull it out we have the fluid pump o-ring and the vacuum o-ring. The vacuum portion slides up and down in here and the fluid portion pumps up inside there. The piece on the bottom here just has two one-way valves on it uh, which allow the fluid to be drawn up and then pumped out. That's a fairly standard arrangement if you just undo the two uh, brass nuts off the bottom it comes apart and it's just a couple of little spring-loaded foo-foo valves like you would find in anything of the era. Uh, this piece here looks as though it shouldn't really go down inside. That's that plunger section here with the spring on the top. That sits inside here, so if I just take that spring out, that sits up above the, the maximum stopper height of this and the reason for that is when this gets all the way to the top you can see just about uh, if I undo this it would be easy off the top. There are three pieces, a flat washer, shape proof washer and a nut. 
and then it just comes off the top. This was the piece that I had to work at. So inside here, there is, well actually there's two valves. The first off is, I don't know if you can just about see it, inside there, I'm just gonna put my flashlight, but I don't know where it's gone. Well, there is a flat piece of fiberboard card looking stuff in the bottom that is held off the bottom of the vacuum line. So when this goes all the way up to the top, it does two things. First, it pushes on this and that closes off the vacuum. So it stops this from having a vacuum inside it. Also, second, if you look carefully, you can see it moves this little piece here, which is the other side of the pin, and spring-loaded inside. And that must seal. Very, very important that that must seal on the top of here. Otherwise, what happens is when you put the vacuum on, it just draws in air through here, and it does not draw a piston up. So if I take everything out, including that dirt, just put the piston in, you'll hear that it slides up and down. If I put my thumb over the end, it's almost impossible to pull out. Very, very difficult. Uh, it will push upwards, because it will just exhaust. You can see it bubbling there. It looks exhaust out of the valve at the top. Uh, not that it needs to do that because normally the action is the application of vacuum. This gets drawn up, pushes the vacuum shut. The vacuum then sucks that valve onto it, holds it there, which also holds this open, which allows air back in, and then it is pushed back down by the spring, pushing fluid onto the windshield and then you take the vacuum off and then you put it back on again, you can repeat the process. So that is really the most important part of it. So this seal should be that way up. So the, the top piece has that. This does come off just by pulling it. You can see it's just, it comes off relatively easily, so long as it's supple. Uh, what I had done, in fact, actually, this was very, very hard. Uh, I had placed it down, put a piece of wood on top of it, and put another piece of something heavy, paint can or something on top of it, and that caused the base of it to, to spread out, and so it makes a good seal. You can see that if I just push it inside that it doesn't want to come out. Uh, when you're putting it back on, the lower lip is actually smaller than the upper lip. It's easier to put it on from the bottom. And you can see there that's how supple it does need to be. This was very hard, and I'm trying to remember what I put on it. Several different types of oil, WD-40, various things. Uh, the one thing that woke it up was brake cleaner. Put a little bit of brake cleaner on it, and that softened it up. Just enough, but that did work. So, the order in which it all goes back together is uh, piston assembly, uh, stopper, the big spring, the little trivet looking thing in the top, and then that all goes together. However, normally what happens is I'll put this in first, make sure it doesn't foul anything whilst it's in the bottom, line that up. You need three or four hands to do this. Push all of that down. And putting it back together, you do need to pay attention to which way it goes together. There is, if I just rub it, a little arrow on here next to the casting marks. And you will see there is another arrow on one of the flanges. They need to line up, otherwise it all gets all kind of out of way you can hold it with the top and the bottom it is a little bit of a challenge and then you can put the oops, <laughs> you can put 
the other ring back on. Once it's kind of snapped back into place, it tends to hold it really quite well. And then just make sure it sits down correctly and it holds itself up together like that. That then, uh, there's a cutout in the top here so that that doesn't seal. Otherwise, if, it, if it's sealed against the top, you can see the whole lot seals with exception of there. It would never be able to draw air and it wouldn't go back down, it wouldn't cycle. So make sure that that lines up. In this instance, it's kind of rusty, you can see. Make sure that that lines back up with the, uh, with the top when you put it back together, which in this instance is quite easy because both of the pipes face the, the same way. Snap washer, shake proof, nuts, make it sit into the groove that it's made in the top and holding the top piece. Just gently nip it up, it doesn't need to be too tight, otherwise you'll break the plastic. And that all goes back together. Don't forget to put the pipe on, otherwise it will just circulate. And that's that. I'm just going to go clean that out, because that's nasty. Put some fresh screen wash in it. But that is the most important thing, that little seal on the top. Uh, second with the vacuum seal inside here being a good fit and a nice tight fit on the inside of the barrel. <coughs> this one not quite so much, it's going to pump because it's a liquid but when you're pumping gases it's a lot more important that it forms a good seal. And uh, also make note that when you draw the vacuum through the windscreen washer motor, it does not draw particularly powerful. Uh, if you try this straight onto the manifold, it should shoot down and, and pump almost immediately if you give it full manifold vacuum. Uh, this one, with about 15 inches of mercury, will pump down in probably about 3 or 4 seconds, hold it 3 or 4 seconds, and then it, it squirts onto the screen. So I hope that was useful. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, put it down below.